Hi everyone and welcome to my data office. Today I'd like to introduce you to a quick and easy way of doing data profiling using Microsoft Excel. If you are new to the Lights on Data YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe. I release videos every week, at least once a week, on topics such as data quality, data management, data governance, BI, and so much more. Today's topic is on data profiling using Excel. Listen, ideally, we would have a dedicated data quality tool, a dedicated data profiling tool, but not all of us have the budget for it. So we just got to work with what we have. And what we have, what a lot of us do have, is access to Microsoft Excel. Now, let's go into this data profiling technique that we could use with Microsoft Excel. And for that, we need some data. So let's just bring that over here. And I did find this open data on InfoPlease. There you go. Uh, this is it. We're just going to load this data into Excel. And I have it ready here as I've also split the first column of the city into two more to include the county and the state. So let's paste it over here. What we do need to do now is make sure that this is seen as a table. As such, looking good. And now what we want to do is we want to go over to the data tab and select from table range, which we just select this one. And this will open the Power Query Editor. All of a sudden, it just loads all that data in. Under the view column here, yes, everything looks great. We do love the mono space where we can unflag that to look a little bit uh, as it was. But I, I do enjoy the, the mono space. Anyhow, and now what we do need to do is just close and load just so we can have a copy of this table. And then we'll just repeat the process Go back to sheet one, data from table and range. And we'll just repeat it just so we can reference the table that we just created. And over here to the left, we can see the queries tab. We need to click on the arrow to expand it and see the table one that we've just created. Oh, that's my cat jumping up and down near me. And the table, the other table is here. So this is what we want to do. I'm just going to delete all of this and just go equals table dot profile. And we're just going to reference table one. Because basically what we're telling uh, Power Query here is just do a data profile on the data from table one. And that's it. Oh, error. Oh, and I know why. It's... Um, it's finicky. We do need to cap capitalize these two. And it worked. Okay, and now we just go close and load. Beautiful. One thing I do want to mention is you all have Power Query. If you have Excel 2016 and higher, this just comes as part of the Excel package. If you have a 2010, 2012, then you just need to install uh, this add-on of Power Query, but it's also freely available from Microsoft. And with the Microsoft uh, MS365, it comes in pre-built, obviously. And actually that one has even more functions that the data profiling uh, functionality is able to provide. And I'll try and get my hands on a 365 copy and I'll just do a walkthrough of that one as well. Okay, so we loaded this data. Let's quickly take a look at it and see what can we find. Well, all of a sudden we can see that it has added these new columns based on the initial columns that we did have in our sheet one. And those were city, county, state, complete and uh, index, grocery, housing, utilities, transportation, healthcare, and miscellaneous goods and services. And there. It's hard to pronounce some of these sometimes, especially when it's late at night like it is now. So, um, 
as I did mention, the profiling tool actually creates these columns based on the columns that we did input from table one. And these were these are uh, the minimum and maximum values, what the average is, standard deviation count, how many nulls do we have, and how many distinct values. And all of a sudden, just by looking at this summary table, it provides us with some awesome insights. Well, let's start with, with the minimum and the fact that we do have a city that it's called as such. I mean, obviously there's some sort of an error here and OH Ohio should actually be in the uh, states column. So that's something that we need to correct and we can correct it right away. Let's just sort by city. There you go, state, Ohio. Already found. What's really cool too is we can just right click and just click refresh. And there you go, it just took under consideration the updates that we've just made. And we can see that reflected in here. Let's see what else we can find. State, obviously this is a, a bit of an issue with the Brooklyn. That was maybe just going under. Um, hmm, interesting. Maybe that was going under county, uh, but no, never mind. That's a neighborhood. I don't even know why it's listed in here as such. So that's obviously another thing that we need to look at. I think another clear piece for a state is if we were to take a look at the distinct count, we see there are 69 states. Well, we know already that there's some data quality errors in that column because there are non um, there are no states that are, you know, 69, unless maybe they are from outside of the US, maybe, but we can quickly take a look, but no, if we sort this from A to Z, obviously we can see these are neighborhoods in New York. So these need to be, oh, even the county new in New York, look at that. It's not good. We need to correct that. Uh, but you know what, if we're going to go through all this data, it's going to take me quite a bit of time to correct everything. So I'm just going to correct these. Uh, but see, I'm so eager to correct data whenever I see that it's bad. It's hard to help myself. Okay, back to this. Oh, let's uh, let's refresh and see how it looks like now. Well, we got rid of two states, I guess, that were incorrect. So we know the 67 distinct that's a bit of an issue. We need to take a look at that entire column, review it a little bit further. What else? Well, cities, so we know there are 325 entries altogether in the table. Um, obviously, there are cities that repeat themselves. Okay, what, what else is standing out? Well, the fact that county is not really populated, so we know we can't really rely on doing any analysis on that data just because it's missing so much. Maybe it's something that we don't even need anyways, but it's something to note. And this definitely is a good red flag that we can't rely on that data. We can't really derive any meanings out of the county column. The other piece is we can see there are a few null values. So for grocery items and for the state, they're really missing entries. So there are five missing entries that probably we should add i don't know about the grocery items how we can find that data but definitely for states we could derive it based on the city let's see what else can we identify in here i think another red flag is on this on the average this one is is really intriguing the grocery items for the average is this needs to be a bit lower than the others so maybe there's something there so we can take a really quick look grocery and it's good to just sort from smallest to largest and yeah there are four that are quite low and I wonder if this is a typo and they were supposed to be 71.0 or there is there is a digit missing there I would assume it is so ideally we would want to contact the data steward of this data set and just find out more information to see if it is confirming our assumption or this is actually accurate data that it needs to be taken into account. 
Anything else? Anything else? I think that's really it. So as you can see, all of a sudden, just by doing this really quick Power Query function, we can find out quite a few errors and we can spot and pinpoint exactly where we need to look into further for some data cleansing that we need to happen after this exercise. So there you have it. This is just a really quick and easy solution that we have available in Excel and I guess Power Query in order to do some data profiling if we don't have a dedicated tool for it. Obviously that's always preferred, but again, sometimes we just have to work with what we have. And if all that you have is Excel, then this could be an easy solution to use. Please let me know if you do have any questions, any comments, and as always, I appreciate your feedback. Please like the video if you've learned from it, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.